I will let you jump in first and tell us about the market. What's going on in lending, Ms. Stacey Medina? Well, nothing exciting has really happened, but I did want to talk about what I posted the video about today. Um, I have a friend of mine who's a business owner that um, owns multiple businesses, and a lot of her employees are not homeowners. And so they're doing a, a regular training that they normally do. And she's having me come in and bring breakfast and do basically a lunch and learn or a breakfast and learn. and explain to them how down payment assistance works um, and the different programs and get them on a plan to buy. Um, and so my thought is, and, and I got brought in on this, so there's a realtor already involved in with this particular person. But my thought is for the realtors, if you know someone that owns a business, set this thing up for yourself. I mean, you could have five, 10, 15 sales, you know, just from one lunch and learn of all of these employees, because what they're going to do is they're going to bonus them out or cash out their PTO to help them gap the difference for their down payment assistance gap. Wow, that's pretty so impressive. It's, it's, uh, these people are, you know, over the top, amazing people. Um, and I think a lot of employers might not do that, that piece. But if you know of anybody that is in that position, let me know. I'd be happy to do the same thing for them. Come in. And then, you know, I'm a handholder. So I'll nurture them. If it takes a year for them to get where they need to be, that's kind of my jam anyways. Um, but I thought it was a really great idea when she called me. I was like, wow, that is amazing. And I love that they're going to help them with the money, which they can, an employer can gift money that is earned. So it can be a gift within the, the guidelines of the loan. Wow. Yeah. So anybody knows anybody or even a boss that has employees, it doesn't have to be the owner. It could be just the boss that wants to bring in, you know, bring value to their employees. And yeah. then you could be the realtor for all the transactions. Oh, that's very cool. So, I, I never thought of that, Cheryl. Yeah, that's a great idea, but I'm just curious. Um, you said they're using the PTO as a gap. Tell me more about They're going to monetize it. So, you know, you earn PTO. So they're going to allow them to, they're going to give them the cash instead of um, having them take the time off if they would choose. Oh. Yeah, so someone's got, like I was talking about, I played golf on Sunday with my buddy Dave works at Golden One. He's like, Gary, I got like six weeks of vacation saved up. Someone could get paid out six weeks. I mean, that could be five, $6,000. Or more, more. Yeah. yeah. Or more, which yeah. right, which would put down, you know. Yeah, that would be the gap, right? Yeah. I mean, you're still going to have to have the, the down payment assistance for the down payment and partial um, closing costs. And then some of that money, maybe the seller contributes a couple grand and then you you bridge the gap and then they come in with their, just their EMD or get that refunded even. Wow. Yeah. So I thought Sweet. it was a really great idea. Yeah. I think we'll start to see there'll be some little niche stuff like this mm -hmm. um, and agents need to figure out how to get through it Yes, um, because we are going into fall. It's going to be just that standard. What does fall look like? I don't think it's going to fall up as much just because it's already fallen off because there's yeah. not inventory um our neighbor's house just uh went up they finally dropped to 10 grand and it went pending um another buddy of mine that works at century 21 um they didn't drop their price they offered 7500 in rate buy down and he's like we went in escrow three days after stating that in the uh, mls comments so i mean there's people out there figuring it out making it happen so absolutely very good very good all right so <clears throat> there's only a couple of us today watching it live and in person, but I'm sure there are hundreds that are going to watch it. So for <laughs> you guys at home watching this over the weekend, because you couldn't make it on a Wednesday at 11 o'clock because you're still in bed. Um, just kidding. Uh, you're probably getting kids to school, picking up kids, getting them lunch, whatever, or hopefully you're out showing properties. So I'm going to share my screen. I am getting a little bit better at this. I'm still not amazing. Um... Where is my, here it is. So we're going to talk about the funnel process today. You guys hear the term funnel and funnel actually means a lot of different things. So um, funnel obviously is just for those car fanatics. My son is a diesel mechanic. It's a, where you pour it in the top and hopefully at some point it eases down into the bottom and drips out into wherever you're trying to get it to that direct spot. So but for us as real estate agents, your goal is to add as many people into the top of your funnel. That could be your CRM. If you're like Steve Hillier, it could be a yellow pad. Um, it could be your text messages, your emails. I mean, you try and hopefully put something into one place. But 
I always say that people don't realize, I mean, for us that have been in the industry a long time, 20-ish years, we know we have to literally be putting people in there on a consistent basis, but we have a pretty big swath of newer agents that are like, well, I'm, I did open houses and I have three leads I'm working with. Well, three leads is not enough. So my uh, start of this is you do not have enough leads that, so you need to be adding and working daily. Um, you probably need somewhere in the 200 to 300 lead name, email, phone number, um, you know, conglomerate. You need to be adding to get to that number. Because ultimately, if you have about 300, um, you need to start moving those people through the process. And some people are going to be at the top. Some people are going to be in the middle. And some people are going to start to finally get to that bottom and drop out the bottom. So I've always been told the numbers, and I apologize, I don't have a specific where I got this number from, but about 300 leads should equal about 10 people buying from you each year. So that doesn't mean um, your sphere of influence I'm talking about adding in cold leads more than anything else. Some people you're trying to work through that funnel process. If you have um, consistently kept in touch with your database, you may only need 100 to get that same 10 because those people already know, like, and trust you. You're adding people to the top of that funnel, that 300, to fine tune it down to the people that will engage with you. And like I said, those 300 leads, I really should call it prospects. And that's another thing I don't think agents realize they go, I have a lead. I have this person that gave me their data. That's not exactly a lead. Really, it's a prospect. It's a, somebody said maybe they would do something. I met them in an open house. I, they took my card. Um, I posted some, you know, social media stuff and someone liked it or said, maybe I'd like some more information that I'm talking about. The very, very top is so cold. That's like taking an ice bath. You need to move them down the funnel. So when they get down the funnel uh, to the end of the funnel, they should be ready to buy. So I'm going to walk through this process. You guys, I don't know how to work my uh, my uh, uh, PowerPoint well enough yet. All right. I hit slideshow. No, it's still there. Oh, go from the beginning. Where do you see that? From the beginning, where do you see that? It will it's, it's hidden, but it's up there. It's up there. Cheryl's teaching me something, so I apologize. Go back to the slideshow tab where you're at. There and then go. look oh, to the okay. left. There you go. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's the answer, but that's where it was. No oh, okay. So Okay, I got it. Okay, just real quick. I'm sorry. Like I said, Kelly can edit this out because I look like an idiot right now. <laughs> For you guys, at least here on home, on the screen in the office, you guys are seeing it full screen, just this right here. But on my computer, which is being recorded, it shows the whole thing. See, so Kelly sees it differently. So Stace, you probably see it the same. I see a big picture and then a small one to the right for some reason. Gotcha. Yeah, so... I don't know why that is. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, that's where we're at. We're gonna yeah, learn it's okay. It. We can see it. It's fine. So final process. Um, it's space bar. And I hit the space bar. Oh, no space bar. All right. So step one, awareness and education. This is where you are getting people just to realize who you are, what you are. You're trying to share information and you've got to be adding value no matter what. These are someone, like I said, you met at an open house, you got, um, you met someone at a, an event, someone took your card, sent you an email, you got a lead from realtor.com, Zillow, wherever it is. This is someone that's just like, hey, I, I kind of like the house or something that you posted about whatever, the market, the rates, whatever it is. And someone is barely, 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 you know, even got your information or you barely got their information. So you have got to be content marketing got to be creating and sharing valuable content. And you have to be using your social media. You've got to be using um, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, if you're a social media person. If you're not, you can go back to the basics um, and you could be using email. You can be using text message, but you got to be sharing content. And Sharon, Cheryl and I were just talking about this. You got to look at blog posts. You got to look at videos. You got to get infographics. You have to show that you are the local real estate market expert. 
Talk about the buying process. Talk about the neighborhood insights if you're specifically trying to hone in on a neighborhood for that person. So um, next one, lead capture. You got to offer valuable resources. This is another way to capture leads. Um, and you got to think about this. You're trying to share information with someone that not only are you trying to gain their trust, but you also want them to say, hey, listen, this agent offers out this, this downloadable resource buyer guide, uh, seller guide. Um, I know we've all seen those in the past. Um, our escrow companies offer them to us. You can buy them on Etsy. My wife does a ton of stuff on Canva. You can create something that's just a little bit extra, even though you think, well, who's really gonna use this? You don't know who's gonna use it. And when you've got 300 people, you're trying to take through that process, offering a buyer um, workbook on what the process is or, um, I've seen it look like um, a Candyland game where you're moving from space to space and it's the escrow process or, you know, team up with your favorite loan officer and get what the loan process is so that you as an agent are offering valuable information to people because they, if they're at the top of that funnel, they're like, eh, whatever. But as you work them down, they're saying, hey, this person has added value to me. They're, you know, they're sharing data points from uh, whether it be Ryan Lundquist or Keeping Current Matters um, or any other RSS feed. You could be, you know, looking at Google, Yahoo Finance, wherever you're getting that data from. And you can be bringing that in, sharing that information. It doesn't have to be your own. It just has to be showing that you go extra a little bit more than the next agent does that's just sitting at the open house going, oh, please, please, please let someone come in and then let me pounce on them. And that'll be my lead. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell them a house. But if you can add in, like Steve says, if you do 10 weeks of open houses, you will have so many prospects into that funnel and then you'll be working them through the process because people come into your funnel all at different levels. Some people do walk into an open house and are like, hey, this is it. I'm ready. I'm. We've already done all the research. We're pre-approved. We're ready to buy. Um, and that's fantastic. But you don't always get that. Some people are just looky lose. They happen to live in the neighborhood. They want to see what that house looks like. That's perfectly fine. Um but they're, like I said, they're all different stages. So it is your goal to add so much value to them that you are um, the person that they become, becomes their trusted professional. So be the professional, showcase your skills about the market, talk about inventory, address major questions and concerns buyers and sellers have before they ask them. I guarantee you every single um, buyer is out there looking on the internet, they're looking at Zillow, they're looking at Realtor.com, they're looking at Redfin, they are gathering data from somewhere. And not all that data is accurate and it doesn't always get painted in the best light. So you could easily go to someone and say, yes, mortgage rates are 7% right now, but in 1980, they were 19%, you know, or that you may be able to describe the buy down strategy, three, two, one buy down, or just a permanent buy down. Um, you might be able to discuss, hey, did you know that if you went to this new build at JMC in Roseville, they're buying rates down to 5.5. So that actually allows them to buy more house. That's unfortunately, it cuts your lender out. But when you go to a new bill, they usually um, you know, are offering a tremendous amount because you use their lender. And hey, if that's what you have to do for that buyer, make sure you didn't get your lead from Stacey Medinas uh, <laughs> and steal it away from her. But like I said, you got to be out there understanding what's going on in the marketplace. Um, talk about interest rates, talk about affordability, and use the re resources from others that are experts in the marketplace like we just mentioned, Ryan Lundquist again. So uh, landing pages. This is probably a little bit uh, out there for some of us that aren't super tech savvy, but you can create a landing page, which is ultimately a very small website, and you can place it um, out there uh, in, under Facebook ads, under Google ads, under Instagram ads, and it's a place for them to go and get information. And you have a, a hook like, hey, find out where you can buy houses for with a 5% interest rate that probably is gonna garner some attention. Then you might be able to send them um, a link that has the three or four builders, one in Elk Grove, one in Roseville, and one in Lincoln, that all are buying rates down to 5.5. Um, and it might be a hook that you use and you say, in order to get the list, give me your name, phone number, and email address. So like I said, just a little bit um, different way to go about capturing names and information. Um, and for those of us that are newer, 
not myself, but for those of you guys that are newer, you may need to start with something like this. And some of you guys may be technological, you millennials out there that are just super savvy and can whip one of those out in 15 minutes on a you know Wix website or whatever it is. Um, that's an opportunity for you guys. So lead capture, uh, nurture and engagement. This is something that we as agents all need to do. This is absolutely where your CRM has to take a paramount uh, place in your marketing. Your CRM, ours is KB Corp for the office. Uh, it's what eXp offers. Um, and you guys could use other ones. I know uh, Roxanne still uses Top Producer. Stacy, what do you guys use as a CRM? Um, yeah. Kelly, what you got? I was just going to say, Amy, uh, who's recently joined our team, she's been using Bloom, which is, mm -hmm. she said she's going to finish the year, but she thinks that KB4 is, she's going to switch. Okay, gotcha. Um, all right. She's just going to finish the year with Bloom. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so there's lots of different CRMs out there. Like I said, our KB Core is our internal EXP one. I use another one also. Um, KB Core has the ability for the agents to set up their people just like they do in MLS, but as they go in and look at properties and start to click around, it will send you um, updates. Hey, Mary Smith, your buyer, looked at this one house five times in the last three days. Probably a chance for you to call Mary and say, I see this house and or I just found this house in Lincoln. That's a three bedroom, two bath, blah, blah, blah. And it happens to be the one she likes. So it's an opportunity for you guys to engage with them. But you have absolutely got to have your people on some type of campaign. They should be um, getting property notices. They should be getting emails from you. And you do not need to set up your emails one at a time. Or I just read this you know, article and I'm going to send it. You can absolutely plan out one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, six months, 32 touch, 33 touch. There's lots of different ways to do things, but that is an email, text message, voicemail. You can set tasks for yourself that I need to call this person once a month or once a quarter, depending on where they're at in the funnel. If they're at the top of the funnel, probably once a quarter. As they move down the funnel, it might be once a month. And as they're starting to get warm and look at properties regularly, you might be calling them once a week, trying to get in and show them properties. Do you have a question, Kelly? I was just, so when I hear that, I think it's time intensive to set all of that up. Is that true? It is time intensive, but the great thing about it is you only have to set it up once and then you can mirror that for all of your people. So think about a cadence that would work. Now, the cool thing about KB Core is they actually have like 50 of them already pre-set up. So it has the cadence, email, text, blah, blah, blah. You just go in and personalize it to make it your own, the wording. And so that would take a lot less time. So you can personalize it that way. And I suppose as you get used to working with the templates they've already provided, you get ideas for your own. Absolutely. Messages. Yep, absolutely. And Gary, the thing that you and uh, or Jen has been working on that she showed me yesterday in our Tech Tuesday, um, the system where you guys have the preset uh, text message formats and things right. like that, that would that was amazing. So, yeah, so you don't I have to it. recreate the wheel, you know? Yep. So good. Yeah. So KB Core has that same thing. They're called swipe files, workflows, uh, white label. There's a bunch of different names for them. KB Cores are just, you know, they're, I think they're called workflows. So that's what they are. Um, the other thing people can do, we all might be afraid of this one. It's webinars and workshops. It's my new favorite thing. You can host li online events where you can edu educate people. And yes, you might only have one person the first time, but you can record them. You can, you know, uh, do it with your spouse in the, you know, in the room. You can get your business partner, your best friend, talk to your dog, um, whoever it takes just to get used to it. But the great thing about it is in, when you try to, and I, I remember doing this back at Connect Days, is we did like this huge, we're going to do this uh, webinar, open house, or not webinar, sorry, open house, come in and get educated on the buying process. And we put flyers out and we did social media push. We had like five people come. And there was like 10 agents, four or five lenders. Um, uh, what's her name? Uh, I forgot. Somebody else in, in led it. I just was a part of it. But it was like all this effort. The great thing is, you just turn on your computer because you can do it on YouTube. You could do it on Zoom. You can do it on Facebook Live. And you can just say, hey, listen, I'm out here sharing some information with all the buyers or all the sellers. Here's what we do. Here's what makes it different. Here's what the market is. And it just gives you an opportunity to share information with the masses. 
Yes, Miss Kelly. And, and you don't need to, like, you can set it up so that you're not seeing that there's nobody else on. You can just do it yes. as if there's a lot, a lot of people coming in. Yes, you can do that 100%. So you can set it up where they don't see anybody else. So it's just you talking, but you they may not realize what's going on. The other cool thing you can do is you can have a friend of yours sit by the side and put questions in the chat and do hearts and um, you know thumbs up. And you can also speak as if there is an audience. Put down 10 names and go, hey, Bob, thanks for joining us. Mary, it's great to see you. Glad to see all these you know people here that I've invited. There's ways to... You know, pump it up a little bit to make it seem like it's some big thing. I see I, you know what? That's exactly what I thought. What was that called? Romper room. Was that it? I think it was romper <laughs> room back in the day. Yep. Do you remember that, Stacey? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. It's a sidetrack. Well, nostalgia. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so like I said, webinars and workshops, an amazing uh, opportunity for you, us as agents, to get out there and engage with people. Um, in different ways. So, all right, personalized comp consultation. This is another thing I think agents don't quite put together properly. You know, we we are so quick to jump in and meet someone at a property. Um, we, you know, we met them in an open house. We've kind of walked through the process. We've gone through a couple steps with them and now they're engaged and we're like, let's get out and look at properties. And yes, that's it's it is important. And yes, you've got to engage them and build rapport. But it is super important, in my opinion, that you sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with the buyer. Because buyers are just like, oh, I called Mary and she showed me property. And now I was calling Joe and he's showing me property. When you sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, we have a Google form we created and it has a list of like 20 questions. What are you looking for in a property? I send it as a link to our clients. They fill it out. They've already started to engage with me. Then I sit down and meet with them at the at the office. We may meet at Starbucks. We may meet, meet at a property and show them one, but then I'm sitting down to have a discussion with them. I talk to them about the 17 steps to go through as a buyer. We talk about the RPA contract. We talk about escrow. We talk about getting pre-approved. I go through a pretty lengthy detail of information. I actually have created video about it. Um, I have a workflow process on, hey, when this, when this trigger happens, like they're you know, got pre-approved, they get three messages from me about pre-approval and what the next steps coming up are. Hey, we're going to be out showing property. We wrote an offer. I send them the three videos I created about the offer process. So I don't specifically have to literally go over the offer every time I've recorded myself. I don't need to record myself again until the RPA changes, which I'm sure is any day now, but I only have to record it once or twice. And then it's good for six months or a year. Um, we, I have interviews with escrow. I have interviews with Stacy, with home inspectors, pest inspectors, with my TC, um, all of these things that are, I'm adding value, but I'm also personalizing these to my clients and talking about every single step of the process. So it really adds that personalization. And in my opinion, in the long term, it's actually going to add to your value, um, I have to stop. I can't talk anymore. I got all stage fright. Steve's here. Just kidding. Um, so there are lots of different ways, like I said, that you can add that value. But um, from a legal standpoint, when you have created relationship, when you have gone over these things in detail, when you have a series of messaging that has gone out to your clients, here's the steps that are going to happen in the process. There is a lot less chance that they're going to try and sue you. Or if something does happen, you're going to be able to describe, look at all the steps I went through to help these buyers get through the, you know, the process. Um, another thing for you can do for clients is if you have people out of area, we have Cheryl who's commuting to Utah and back now. So when she's in Utah, um, you know, she can show property there, but when she's here, she might be able to only have phone calls. So one of us might need to go out and do a virtual tour for her because she's in Utah and we still want to see a property, but you can do virtual tours for your clients. Um, it is a great opportunity for you to show that you're going to go the extra mile for your people. But also when you're doing those videos, it is a great thing to take and add to your social media. Look at this beautiful house I'm showing in Roseville today because your clients should become personalized friends throughout the process. Some I know we don't always like, but um, you should start to engage them on social media. They should see that you are out showing other properties, working with other clients, um, all the value add that you continue to do for all of your folks. So uh, step five, value added incentives. Another thing you guys can do to kind of bring them through that funnel process and really secure them 
is there is a possibility of doing exclusive offers. You could say, hey, if you work with me, um, I can get you reduced closing costs. I know a lot of agents will say, listen, I pay for your home warranty. That's my gift to you at the end. Um, some people can get, you know, will pay for a home inspection. Um, some people will give a credit at the end for a closing costs, whatever. That's something you can work out with your lender. Uh, and another thing you can add is collaboration through local businesses, discounts on services moving. And I want to send in this plug for our agents, for you guys at eXp, Utility Connect. If you guys have not seen that yet, anybody in the room, you guys have all seen it? Yeah. All right. So Utility Connect, I personally use this and it's a, it is a messaging that goes out to my sellers, goes out to my buyers, but I also send it to the buyer's agent on the listing side. So if I'm a listing agent, I send that link to the buyer's agent and say, here's a quick link. I use it for all my clients. You Feel free for your clients to utilize this to get all their utilities set up for them for free. Of course, it's got my branding on it. But the other agents look at that and go, what is that thing? I go, that's actually something that eXp offers us as uh, agents. But here's the super cool part. Do you guys know you get paid for it? When you set up a client on Utility Connect and they go through the process, you actually get a percentage of their first month bills. They say it ranges from 40 to $60 for every single client. So Utility Connect, go out and get it. Um, another thing we do is um, we went to our escrow company and they send us a sheet that's uh, SAC, Plaster, and Eldorado all separate. And it has a list of all the water companies, utility companies, SMUD, PG&E, the phone companies. We have put that into our branding. My wife is creating that for um, all of the team. We're going to have a white label for you guys to be able to utilize that stuff. Um, but then you'll be able to put your name and your information on it. And it's just a nice little piece to say, here you go, make these phone calls or send them a beautiful link with your picture on it. It's all attached to you. And that way, when it closes, you make a couple bucks. And hey, you know, a couple bucks here and there helps out. So I, I've seen it come through and I'm yep. like, okay. it's super easy. It take it literally takes five minutes. It's five minutes. It's so easy. How do they get paid? Um, they sell extra services. They're going to sell security systems and things like that. So there's a little upsell on it. And I'm sure they probably work something on the backside for some commissions for the moving companies and different things like that. So Utility Connect, is that the thing that we can access in our passport account? Mm -hmm. The one that says, um, I think it says. It says Utility, Utility Connect. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yep. Just making sure. So. Yeah. Very cool. So you guys could be utilizing that. All right. I will, uh, I will make it a point to, uh, it's all, it's only a five or 10 minute thing, but I will actually make that a point to do a little quick slideshow on that in the next couple of weeks. Cool. All right. So inclusion throughout this process, it's important to continu continuously analyze the data and feedback to refine your approach. So like I said, as you're adding people into the funnel, you're going to find that some people are going to love you just in the beginning when Stacy, Steve, at an open house, he is automatically their best friend. I'm not so good at open houses. So I need to take a little bit more, you know, um, look at my buyers that are coming in and I need to work on my skill set. And so, you know, I need to be able better communication tools. Um, and then you guys also need to be looking at when you've got someone going through the process, like how many people did I have? At the beginning of this, I talked about 300 people into the funnel to probably get out about 10 and like I said, these are based on cold leads, not warm leads, not your sphere of influence. But as you increase your skill set as an agent, as you um, get better at providing market data and sharing with these people, they're going to go through the funnel a little faster. They're going to get to the bottom. They're going to build trust with you faster. And that's really what's the most important thing is, you know, adding that value so that they build trust so that you get them through the process and ultimately turn them into a client for life. So that's it. That's all I got today. What questions do y'all have? I have one. Go ahead, Cheryl. So I don't, I'm really bad about this. I don't remember where I heard this. Might have been from the Tuesday uh, meeting at uh, the board. Mm -hmm. I think they had a CAR guy or an NAR guy there. Nothing. But they were talking about uh, the lawsuits that. In the R has been involved in yep. regarding our commissions. And mm -hmm. they said that we should all be using a buyer broker agreement because this will help us not get in trouble with that commission thing. 
on it. Gotcha. So Cheryl's question was about the commission. So NAR has massive lawsuits. Um, I know Anywhere just started to settle. That was like in Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. Um, and so ultimately the thought process is the listing side, the uh, listing brokerage has gone out to the buyer side and said, or to the seller and said, hey, you're going to pay both sides commission. We're going to then split that. And we're going to give a portion out to the buyer side. And there's a um, class action lawsuit that says the seller shouldn't have to pay the buyer side or it shouldn't be forced upon them. So Cheryl's thought process or what she heard from Car and R was, hey, maybe you should all buy our broker agreements. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's exactly the answer, but we need to start thinking about it. Um, I know I'll, I would say I, I'm starting to hear buyer broker agreement more often. I hear people changing the name to like VIP agreement. I'm a big Kyle Whistle fan, so I watch a lot of his stuff. They call it a VIP agreement. It's a specialty agreement. Like I said, when you're sitting down and going over that one-on-one -on -one appointment with someone, it's a lot easier to say, listen, I'm going to pour this value into you. Here's the relationship I asked for. Here's the contract I'm asking for you guys up front. So, I mean, it, it's an it's an easy thing to, to get used to. Um, I think the biggest issue is going to be if the lawsuits go a certain way where they say the seller can only will will only have to pay the listing side now you have buyers there's no buyer side commission our mls used to only have a percentage or dollar sign now there's actually the ability to put zero in so if the listing side agent says hey i'm going to take three percent for me and i'm offering zero to the buyer side it's up to us as agents to figure out how we're going to get that buyer side commission and you're right a buyer broker agreement says I'm due to an half, 3%, whatever it is. And hopefully we can get it from the seller. But if we can't, then I'm going to get it, you know, from you guys as buyers. Now, if they try and do that, there will be certain people that put zero out there and those houses aren't going to get shown, in my opinion. Or if an agent is really good, that agent's going to say, well, listen, we're going to offer you full price, but I'm only offering you full price if you agree to pay my commission on the backside. Now, Remember, agent commission is between broker to broker. It doesn't actually a part of your contract. That's why the CBC, Operating Broker Compensation Agreement, is a separate document, not signed by buyer or seller. Wait, yeah, not it's only signed by agents and um, office managers. So it'll be something you have to then submit to the listing side. Hey, I'm only going to present you an offer if you guys agree to pay me a commission. So a lot of times that's done uh, off market properties. You know, the buyer's agent says, here's my one party compensation agreement. You're going to pay me 3%. And therefore I will then bring you an offer. So there will be some differences as we go through this process. I just don't know how it's going to unfold. Mm -hmm. So that's my thoughts on it. Miss mm -hmm. Stacy. I was just having this exact conversation before this Zoom started with the rep from the lenders because he sent me the article that someone had boarded him about this lawsuit. And we were discussing from the lender side perspective, because, you know, most of the buyers are rubbing two nickels together. So they're not going to be represented. We don't feel represented properly if there's only a listing agent involved and they can't afford to buy, to pay for a buyer's agent. And it goes against everything of this Dodd-Frank and all the, the, you know, all of this stuff that we're trying to protect the consumer and this and that. The buyers are the ones that, I mean, you guys are going to get screwed too as buyer's agents, but the buyers will not be represented potentially properly. Yeah. And so I just can't see how they're going to allow this to happen where the buyers don't have their own representation. And well, if they can't afford to pay it, then they don't get to have it. It's just. Well, it takes us back to like 1950s when it was buyer beware. Correct. The getting that aside, the buyer's like, well, I'll, I'm, I'll, I want to do that. I want to buy the a The handshake. House. The handshake yeah. transaction. Where we had contracts, right? Crazy. But they never had to pay a commission because they didn't have representation. So you're right. You're really putting them in a bad spot. So oh it'll be up to us as buyer's agents to figure out how we're going to do that. They're like, hey, we're going to, we'll increase the price by 2% in order for you to pay me. Or, hey, um, instead of asking closing cost credit, we're going to ask for you to pay the commission or something of, the, of that nature. I mean, and in a, when it's a listing, you know, frenzy like 2021 and 2022, you're going to be able to have to say, hey, I'll, I'll take no commission. I mean, or I won't represent you. And then there's going to be buyers just everywhere. But then you end up ultimately listing side says, hey, well, I worked it out with my seller where I get an extra 1% if I represent the buyer instead of me having to pay two and a half out to the buyer side. So then the listing agents are going to get a lot of double ending 
going on in my opinion, which I just heard the other day, only like six or eight states allow for double ending right now, which I was not even aware of. I didn't realize that was an issue. So now you're, most states don't even have the ability. So you only have listing sites, right? You're, you're ultimately screwing the consumer like Stacy, you know, just said, that's kind of crazy. So. Yeah, that's just, it's unbelievable that it's gotten this far. I mean, a couple of them have been settled. I mean, the, the lawsuits are done. I'll forward you the whatever what I got so you can look at it if you money want. Money hasn't paid it. out yet, but they've agreed to terms. Right, so but they've agreed to terms. Money. So what does that look like for my buyer? <laughs> That's my concern. I'm like, ah. Yeah, I mean. I'm the advocate for a buyer, right? Yeah, we're going to have to come to Stacey and say, hey, Stacey, I need a 2.5% credit so you can pay for my commission. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, that, that, that's uh, not going to happen with these rates, I'll tell you that. Holy moly. They'll be paying 10%. <laughs> So, all right. Any other questions? Anybody? All right. Well, Steve just walked in. You guys totally missed it because you guys aren't here anyways. And you don't get a chance to win a card anyways. Like, <laughs> all our mentor, mentee folks, Wednesdays at 4 p.m., Fridays at 4 p.m. For you guys that are new, don't forget about it. We're going to be teaching you guys stuff, the basics. So, Thank you all for being here, Miss Stace. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.